Remember when we were talking about collagens? We said there are fibril forming collagens. And for example, type 1 and type 2, they form fibrils. And we said that type 4 collagen forms these mats on which cells can grow. So we have basically been talking about basal lamina uh, in, in a passive way. Now let's look at the detailed structure of basal lamina. Basal lamina is a flexible thin 40 to 120 nanometer thick mats of specialized extracellular matrix that underlie all epithelial uh, cell sheets and also tubes. They also surround individual muscle cells, fat cells and Schwann cells. These cells are also basically uh, responsible for uh, making the sheet uh, around the peripheral nerves and also basically they isolate uh, these nerves from the other cells. The basal lamina separates cells and epithelia from the underlining or the surrounding connective tissue. In other locations such as kidney glomerus, a basal lamina lies between two cell sheets and functions as a highly selective uh, filter. We talked about this uh, previously also that uh, when we are talking about different functions of ECM, extracellular matrix, and we said uh, besides performing other tasks which are cell attachment, uh, for example, also uh, basically structural support and also playing an important role in signaling, uh, basal lamina can also perform the function of a filter and uh, determining which molecules can enter or pass through the basal lamina. Here, for example, what we have talked about are the muscle cells. You can see here individual muscle cells. They are enclosed in the sheet uh, of basal lamina. And these cells are interacting with the connective tissue uh, through the basal lamina. Connective tissue doesn't directly interact with, the, uh, with these muscle cells. Here in epithelium, uh, they are forming this mat that we have talked about. On the surface of these mats, these basically epithelial cells can uh, live. This basal lamina, we have said, can pr provide the signaling function, among other things, to these cells. Here in kidney glomerus, basal lamina is again uh, drawn in yellow color. It is basically serving the purpose of uh, filtering materials, so it restricts the larger molecules from blood to enter into the urine. Basal lamina can additionally determine the cell polarity. We have seen that how epithelial cells are polar. The two ends of two sides of these epithelial cells are different. They perform different functions. Uh, we saw that earlier uh, in the course. They also can influence the cell's metabolism since uh, basal lamina is also uh, signaling cells in different ways. Basal lamina can organize proteins in adjacent uh, plasma membranes of uh, cells. For example, we saw how different proteins can uh, accumulate in different domains of the plasma membrane. They can promote cell survival. We have uh, seen an example of that also uh, when we were talking about embryos. They also can influence cell proliferation, meaning how many times or whether a cell divides or not divides. Also, differentiation is an important role of basal lamina. Cells which have not differentiated yet, they get a signal from basal lamina which tells them what type of cell they need to form. They also serve as highways along which cells can migrate, uh, which is important, especially during embryogenesis. Basal lamina is synthesized by the cells that rest on it. I'll show you a micrograph, actually a scanning electron micrograph. You can appreciate how this, these different structures are organized. A multilayered stratified squamous epithelium that forms the epidermis of the skin. Uh, in that tissue, the basal lamina is tethered to underlining connective tissue by specialized anchoring fibrils made up of type 7 collagen molecules. We, when we were talking about collagen molecules, we had already mentioned this in um, collagen module that collagen basically performs this function of attaching basal lamina to the adjacent connective tissue. Here, as uh, I mentioned, I'll show you a scanning electron micrograph. Here, these are these round objects are basically epithelial cells. 
you can see they are resting on this mat. This is uh, basically the basal lamina. The whole surface is uh, uh, made up of this connective tissue, uh, uh, this uh, extracellular matrix material. And also underneath the basal lamina, we have this connective tissue. And here you would have those type 7 collagen molecules that are basically attaching uh, this um, uh, material, this our extracellular matrix uh, to the connective tissue. Basal lamina contains type uh, 4 collagen, as I mentioned. Also, the large heparin sulfate uh, proteoglycan, uh, which is called perlican, and glycoproteins, laminin, and nitrogen. Uh, I would like to mention in literature, uh, you may come across a word, antactin, which is another name for nitrogen molecule. And these uh, molecules are also uh, glycoproteins. Type 4 collagens, we have said a few things about them in collagen module. I would just like to remind you again that they're more flexible uh, than fibrillar collagens. Their triple helix is interrupted in 26 regions, allowing this molecule to bend. In fact, this molecule can bend in uh, 26 different regions. And also, importantly, that we had said the propeptides of the mature collagen molecule are cleaved by enzymes that are embedded in the plasma membrane, the outer surface of the plasma membrane. Type 4 collagen, they are not, uh, the propeptide sequences are not cleaved. In fact, their uncleaved terminal domains allowed them to assemble extracellularly into these flexible sheet-like multi-layered network that we saw in uh, the electron micrograph in the previous slide. Laminin, uh, this is also a very important component of basal lamina. It is a large flexible um, protein molecule made up of three different uh, long polypeptide chains. Here, for example, in the red, you have the alpha chain. In the yellow, you have the gamma chain. And also, the green is basically the beta chain. So this is sort of an asymmetric cross. And it, this molecule is held by disulfide bonds. Uh, so these are permanent covalent bonds. And also, please note that there is a helix re helical region which can uh, form coiled-coiled uh, alpha helical domain. Also, there are multiple globular domains in this molecule which also play an uh, important role in uh, cell adhesion. Here we have an electron micrograph of laminin. Uh, we saw that cross structure, asymmetrical cross structure. Here you can see it in this micrograph. This is uh, the transmission electron micrograph. You can uh, see these globular domains we saw in that earlier uh, slide. These slightly uh, larger domains, these are the globular domains. A uh, laminin uh, has several functional domains. One of its domains can bind to perlican. Another domain can bind nitrogen. And generally, there are two or more uh, laminin uh, domains which can uh, basically bind to receptor proteins on the cell surface. Like Type 4 collagen, laminins can self-assemble in vitro into felt-like sheets. Initially, when basal lamina is being formed, it is the laminin that forms this basal lamina. And later on, collagen uh, type 4 basically joins and forms the structure which we have been calling basal lamina. Nitrogen and perlican can bind to both laminin and type 4 collagens. They connect uh, type 4 collagen and laminin networks. So they are reinforcing the interaction between the laminins and also the collagen type 4. In tissue, laminin and type 4 collagen preferentially polymerize while bound to receptors on the surface of the cells producing the proteins, although they can self-assemble also in a test tube. Many of the cell receptors, as we have talked about earlier, are members of integrin family. So here is the structure of basal lamina. You can see different players in it. Uh, here, for example, the blue crosses are the laminins. The small white molecule is the nitrogen. The green molecule with many three tails is the perlican. And here we have uh, this molecule, uh, the type 4 collagen. And this forcep-like th thing sticking out of the membrane is basically the integrin molecules. You can see integrin molecules in this case, are binding the laminin molecule. 
In other cases, they will be binding, for example, the, the type 4 collagen. So the interaction, this is how the interaction works. Type 4 collagen can bind directly laminin. And this interaction is reinforced by nitrogen and perlecan, which can bind both type 4 collagen and also laminin. So we have seen uh, the structure of basal lamina. We have seen what molecules make basal, basal lamina and how these molecules interact with each other.